Cheers, pal. Yes, yeah, take that as challenge accepted, young man. Okay, so that was Marcus. Normally every week Marcus sends me over his video footage so I can sit here and edit it at my electrician's inspired table. So this is a cable drum top and a conduit leg. But this week has been a bit pressed for time. So he said, I've sent you some images and therefore the word challenge came into it. He said, can you turn those images into a video that can explain about the old consumer unit the customer had and the new one that he installed and the benefits of installing that new one? Well, I've accepted that challenge, so I expect you to put as many comments as you can as you go along, all the things you spot that I don't mention in the video. So let's see if I can turn those pictures into the video hopefully we're gonna see next. So this is the original one. Looks great from the first point, the fact it's made of metal, and we know our domestic consumer units need to be made of a non-combustible material or installed within a non-combustible enclosure, and we generally go for that metallic consumer unit. And this is made of metal, so that's the first thing that's good about the original consumer unit. The main switch there on the right hand side, linked main switch or double pole switch for isolation, in other words it's currently on, if we were to operate it it would go off and turn off the whole installation, we expect to see one of those within our consumer unit, however it's also a residual current device, it's an RCD, so we're thinking, okay, so if that's the RCD, it should be offering additional protection. And from our classroom lessons, we know that an RCD rated at 30 milliamps or less will offer additional protection. However, this RCD is actually rated at 100 milliamps and therefore wouldn't offer that protection. And by having an RCD as the main switch, the other issue is if it does operate under earth leakage conditions, it disconnects itself and all the circuits attached to it, and that's all six within the installation. And that's not very good from a selectivity point of view. So all the lights and all the sockets, etc., would go off in the installation. And if it was at night time, we would be plunged into darkness. And obviously you'd have to return to the consumer unit in order to re-energize all the circuits within the installation. So that's quite inconvenient to you and obviously leads to dangers when you're plunged into darkness. The overcurrent protection devices we've seen a few times on the channel and in the classroom are BS3036 semi-enclosed rewirable fuses. So in other words, inside of there, there are a couple of attaching pins and a piece of thin copper wire attached between them. And when there's an overcurrent or a short circuit, the actual copper itself will melt and disconnect the circuit. And we know they're not very precise devices. They have a fusing factor of two, which gives us some concerns when doing our design. And also when they do operate, so you make a nice loud bang, which uh, keeps you nice and awake. But when they do operate, it requires a level of skill in order to re-thread another piece of copper wire through between the two terminals in order to re-energize the circuit. And is the customer gonna select exactly the right size fuse wire? So we can see working from the right to left, we go red, red, so 30, 30, and then we go 5, 5, 30, 30. Are they going to select the exact size fuse wire to replace, say, the 30 or the 5? Or of all they've got is 30 amp rewirable fuse wire and they just put it into the lighting circuit and therefore create a dangerous situation with it being overfused for its actual conductor size is going out maybe one millimeter squared. So there's some issues there that would need to be addressed and updated. It doesn't always mean when you look at a consumer unit maybe that's made of plastic and we're used to looking at maybe those ones with two RCCBs on them, it's not always a necessary to have to have that upgraded just because it's an older style consumer unit. There's lots of other considerations before you decide to change a consumer unit, not just the fact it's made of plastic and now it needs to be made of metal. And we'll obviously address those throughout the time on the channel. So let's see what the new consumer unit can offer us compared to the old one. So let's take a look at some of the benefits of having this new consumer unit fitted. And if we start on the far right hand side, we've got something that wasn't present in the previous one at all. And that's a type two SPD or surge arrester. So we've got a surge device installed there in order that we can offer some protection for items that are in circuit. So say plugged in, so you've got your TV, electronic components in there, you've got your mobile phone, you've got your tablet, you've got your games console, PC, you've got the electronic equipment within the oven, a boiler, 
all of those are sensitive to over voltages. So in other words, rising well above 230 volts within the installation. And the SPD's job there is to protect from those over voltages. Now they can be caused in a couple of different ways and we're gonna keep it nice and simple in this video. So we can have a transient over voltage caused by atmospheric conditions not onto the property. So it could be a, a storm, a lightning or an electromagnetic storm somewhere say in your town or village that ends up being dropped into the system. By the time it gets to you, it's an over voltage and that can cause you a problem. And that's probably not quite as common as the other one being by switching loads. So we've talked about before when we have a magnetic ballast within a fluorescent light fitting that we drop a back EMF across the tube. And we've used that in other videos and in classroom lessons in order to get it to strike. Well, imagine you were near some industrial works. So maybe near a factory unit with lots of motors, which are inductive loads, and they were turned off Okay, obviously that could drop that effectively voltage back into the system at higher voltage than the 230 nominal voltage could appear into your installation. And that surge of voltage could cause damage to your electronic components. Or it could be the big transformer. So we know a transformer is a big coil and that's at the end of your street, it's 11 kV. And that was turned off, okay, power cut in other words, effectively the same thing happens again. We have that back EMF or that dropping of voltage into the system and becomes a spike that could end up at your property and damage those electronic equipments plugged in. Pretty much most circuitry now has some sort of electronic component in that could be damaged by that. So by installing a type two surge protection device, you offer a level of protection against that. Definitely not a lightning strike on the building. That's something completely different, but it's that transient over voltages that we talk about in the classroom. So that's there on the right hand side. And you see the two little windows in it are green. They will change to red when that surge arrester requires replacing. So next to the SPD is the main switch or linked main switch or double pole switch, all names used in multi-choice questions and written papers. So that's there for means of isolation. So by operating that switch, it's currently in the on position and we look at the windows there, they are red, red for danger. Okay, if you look at the far left hand side of the devices, there is a green window, they're in the off position. So red for danger, so it's in the on position. And when I disconnect that, or in other words, operate that double pole switch, it disconnects both the line conductor and the neutral conductor, because we know when we talk about them together, they are live conductors. So when I operate the main switch inside of the consumer unit there, I actually isolate all the circuits to the left-hand side. In other words, I turn off the power within that installation by operating that linked main switch or double pole switch. So next to the main switch, we have an MCB, a miniature circuit breaker, offering short circuit and overload protection. And it's a B type 32 amps. Remember, they come as Bs, Cs and Ds. And this is a B32, so it's 32 amps. And that MCB is feeding the SPD on the far side. So that's the part of the circuit that just goes that short distance to that SPD. And I've got videos on the channel showing you how to connect up an SPD as well, and I'm sure we'll make more in the future. Next to that, we start a row now of RCBOs, residual current circuit breakers. So these are both an MCB and an RCD combined into one device. And what's really handy about having all of those elements in one is it removes one of the issues we had on the first board to do with selectivity. So if we look at that first floor lighting circuit, it's a B6, so the MCB element of it is a B type and it's six amps, but it's also an RCD rated at 30 milliamps. So that RCD element will offer additional protection. And if we look next to that, it shows us what type the RCD is. And we know that RCDs come in four different types. This is a type A and pretty much now the minimum requirement to be installed. So as you look at the RCDs that we have in the workshop um, or around the installations that you're installing as an apprentice, you may be seeing that older symbol, which is just the simple AC waveform. And that AC RCD now is pretty much impossible to fit into an installation because if you've got any type of electronic components, which we said we had when we fitted our surge arrester, is you can't use that type of RCD. So A type is really now the minimum. And that's quite important because as we look at the consumer units in the workshop, many of ours have that AC waveform on them. And we've got to say to ourselves, if I was installing an RCD, whether it be an RCBO or an RCCB in an installation, I should be looking at an 
A type one as a minimum. And that's the symbol I should be seeing on the item that I bought from the wholesaler and therefore then installed. Just a quick explanation why it's an A type as a minimum. Now they can withstand or handle up to six milliamps of DC. Now this is not earth leakage current that we've talked about when we're talking about 30 milliamps for the RCD element. This is for the AC circuit that's gone out and it's connected to something that then becomes a DC item, an LED downlight, a games console, computer, etc. If there's a fault or a part of that circuit starts to break, down the DC element could appear onto the AC side and affect the AC waveform and these A type RCBOs or A type devices can withstand up to six milliamps of that DC current being leaked back and still perform correctly. The other two types are F and B okay and we will go through those in more detail in other videos so A type being the minimum. So we've got a B6 so a B type breaker six amps it's an A-type 30 milliamp RCBO, so it's offering additional protection as well as short circuit and over current as well. So we've got all of those built into one device. So if that was to trip, it would only disconnect the first floor lighting circuit and leave every other circuit in the consumer unit energized. So it gets over that selectivity issue between our RCDs that when on our previous board, the main switch, which was an RCD tripped, it disconnected all the circuits. We've now got the advantage of this one RCD under earth fault conditions trips and only disconnects that circuit. Next to it, you've got another B6 for the ground floor lights, and then you've got a B32 for the cooker, a B32 for a sockets, which is likely to be a ring final circuit. And then the end one is a B16 for a water heater. So that was 16 amps, 32, 32, 6, 6 for those ones that are the RCBOs that are being used. And then we've got the ability to extend the wiring system. Now, it doesn't mean put an extension on the building because we've left some spare ways. So you've got a spare way there of a 32 amp type B RCBO, again, A type 30 milliamps, and a couple of breakers spare, and a couple of blank ways as well. So what we've done here is, unlike the original board that was completely full, all six circuits were taken up, the board has been changed and allowed for the electrical system to be extended by leaving five spare ways. Now, kindly, the you know, electrician being markers has left an RCBO and two breakers in there. So that's quite handy if you come back to extend the circuits, you might find that a circuit's already there that you can use. And obviously there's additional blanks in as well. So an exam question is often, why would you want more ways within a board than you're using? We're only using six of the actual ways in here. Why would you want more spare ways? Well, that's so you can have future extensions to the wiring system. Another advantage of using individual RCBOs for each circuit is the amount of natural earth leakage current you're allowed to have on a circuit protected by an RCD. So if we have an RCCB in an older style consumer unit, say protecting five, six circuits, the total amount of earth leakage current from all five or six circuits can be no greater than 30% of the rated value of the RCCB. So if that RCCB is rated at 30 milliamps because it's offering additional protection, the maximum natural earth leakage current from all of those circuits it protects is just nine milliamps. And we'll talk about natural earth leakage current in other videos as well as in the classroom. So that nine milliamps is not a lot when you've got six circuits or five circuits that could potentially leak a little bit of natural earth leakage back. So that can cause you an issue. As soon as you go over to, as we have done in this board, individual RCBOs, because of the RCDs for each circuit, each of them, so we take the first floor lighting, can have a 30% natural earth leakage current. So what's 30% of 30? So 10% of 30 is obviously three, and therefore 30 is nine, and that gives you your nine milliamps. But that means that one lighting circuit can have a natural earth leakage current of nine milliamps, and then next to it, the ground floor lights could have a natural earth leakage current of nine milliamps, and so on as we do the cooker, the sockets, and the water heater. So that's another thing that makes it an advantage having individual RCBOs over the old system where we had those RCCBs protecting several circuits at once. Also, when the RCCB trips, it trips off four, five, six circuits if it's half the board as well. So we can see how this consumer unit is a strong contender for what we should be fitting when we're out there in the real world. 
compared to what we're probably doing within our workshop, where we've got maybe that one RCD as a main switch, protecting a couple of circuits when we're say doing a lighting circuit in a two-way board. Okay, so in the reality, it would be lovely in college if every circuit that we install is on an individual RCBO, but we've got to think why we'd want to do that. So we've given some really good reasons here, haven't we? We have a, an A-type RCBO. We now know it can have a natural earth leakage current up to 30% of its value. So that being nine milliamps. We know it increases our selectivity. In other words, if there is a fault on that circuit, say it's to earth and it trips itself out, it will only disconnect in this case, maybe the first floor lighting and not disconnect any of the other circuits that are actually healthy. So it keeps those circuits on under fault conditions. Also, if there is a fault and say it's on the first floor lighting that keeps tripping, maybe it's an earth fault, that actually from the electrician's point of view, we've now already identified the circuit with a problem on. Whereas if we've got our RCCBs with five or six circuits and that's tripping out, we've obviously got five or six circuits to start the investigation process on. So that's another advantage of using those RCBOs. So I've tried to relate that to the real world. You've turned up at an installation, all the circuits are energized and working, and you're trying to suggest that that consumer unit needs replacing. And we now can see some of those benefits, can't we, by introducing the SPD. What they didn't have before was that protection against over voltages, as well as obviously a different type of RCD protection that offers additional protection that also means that only the unhealthy circuit will operate under fault conditions. Now, we haven't gone into some of the other things we've mentioned in other videos about IP ratings, a key or tool to enter the enclosure, but that's in a video called Understanding My Consumer Unit. And all the information within there is very relevant to obviously today as well. I just wanted to add in those elements that we're not gonna see in the electrical workshop, are we? The likelihood is our RCD main switch will be AC and we should be now aware of the fact we should be moving away from it. And we should be aware of the fact that ideally in the electrical workshop, we should be using RCBOs of an A type as minimum to protect our individual outgoing circuits. So as always, I hope this video has been some help.